So we read in Exodus chapter 20, verse 7, that we shall not take the name of the Lord our God in vain. And most often we apply that to people who use God's name to damn something or someone, use his name as a swear word, um, or people who blurt out the name of Jesus Christ in frustration, aggravation, anger. Um, and we apply that, and I, and I think that's accurate. And that certainly uh, is applicable to taking the Lord's name in vain. But I believe that, that it goes much further than that. And when we look at the phrase that we shall not take the Lord's name in vain, those two words there, in vain, what do they mean? They don't just apply to a swear word, okay? Or using it in an unflattering manner. That's not, that's not specifically the application there. If you look, that phrase, in vain, is laced throughout Scripture. The Apostle Paul used it a few times, and he would say that he, he hoped his labor was not in vain. And he tells us, your labor of love is not in vain. So what does that mean then? What does that word vain mean? Because obviously your labor of love wouldn't be a swear word or an unflattering word. So what does that mean, vain? To do something in vain is to be unproductive towards success. That's what vain means. Something that is unproductive towards success. And so when we use the name of the Lord in vain, we would use his name in a manner which is unproductive towards success. Okay, so let's let's reconcile that a little bit. Go to Matthew chapter 7. Jump down a few verses. You'll see Jesus is saying not to give what is holy to dogs and not to cast your pearls before swine. A lot of people have misconstrued this statement. And we take it to mean that there are some people out there who are not worthy of hearing the gospel. That there are some people out there that we can determine are dogs, are swine, and they are undeserving of us sharing the love of God with them. I'm not real comfortable with that. I am not so comfortable with myself and so confident that I can make a determination of one who is unworthy of hearing or receiving the gospel. In fact, I don't think any of us should be that comfortable, okay? But I'll speak for myself in this case. I'm not comfortable with that, with just determining in my mind that person is swine and I will not share the pearl of great price, the love of the living God, okay? I'm not going to hold back what is holy, and that is the gospel of Jesus Christ from someone because I think they're a dog. I'm not cool with that, okay? And if we back up and we go to the very first verse in chapter 7 uh, in, in Matthew, Jesus again is still speaking here, and he says, Judge not, lest you be judged. So he makes that statement, and then just a few sentences later, he says, Don't give what is holy to dogs, and don't cast your pearls before swine. If you're determining that someone is a dog or swine, you're judging, which goes completely against what he said at the very beginning of this. So hold on for a second, okay? He's not contradicting himself here. So let's put this phrase, this this group of sentences into context. Don't give what is holy to dogs. Don't cast your pearls before swine. He then goes into, ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find, knock and the door shall be opened to you and is talking about prayer and your faith in God, our faith in God, okay? So he goes further on and says, if you, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more does your Father in heaven know how to give good gifts to his children, okay? So if we're capable of giving good things to our kids, okay, uh, how much more? Is our Father in Heaven going to give good things to His children who ask? Okay, so let's put this whole thing in and let's wrap this. Let's wrap this thing together. The pearls before swine reference, or what is holy before dogs, he's referring to our faith and how we treat our faith. Okay, and taking the Lord's name in vain, we're told Jesus told us, "Hey, 
When you ask, you shall ask in my name. So when we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we close out, in a lot of cases, we close out our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. When we do that, we need to hold to that faith. We need to believe it. Okay? And not just use in Jesus name amen as our close out as our sign off to our prayer and that's I think what we're doing a lot of times is it's like uh, it, you know copy that command post Roger copy out okay in Jesus name amen and we you know it's like we're trying to let God know we're closing out the prayer here now just let you know it's all finished here we're done peace out that's not how we should end our prayers and that's not where our faith should be okay when we pray and you can some of you have seen or you can go check out the video uh, what's in a name the name of Jesus is the name that is above all names Jesus said that all authority in heaven and earth has been given to him so when we pray in the name of Jesus we're praying in the name that is all power and authority all we got none he's got all okay does that make sense so when we pray in jesus name we should not do it flippantly we shouldn't do it casually or carelessly we should do it and recognize that when we pray in his name we are praying in the name that is the name above all names okay there is no other name given among men by which men must be saved but the name of jesus christ so when we pray in his name Keep your faith before the throne of God. Keep it there. Don't cast it down. Don't be casual and careless about it, okay? Don't cast your pearls before swine. Don't just casually throw your faith around like, oh yeah, well, mm, I hope in God works something on that. Mm, mm. No. When we give our things, our cares and concerns to God, when we take our prayers, when we ask, seek, and knock, we need to keep that holy, holy request before the throne of God, before the Holy of Holies. Does that make sense? Don't cast your pearls before swine. Don't just be careless with your prayers and with, and with your faith. And certainly do not take the name of the Lord Jesus in vain by just using him as your tagline to your prayers. That's not what God wants for us. He wants us to keep our prayers holy and keep them in His presence as a precious stone, as a pearl, okay? Don't take the Lord's name in vain. Let's, let's as we live and as we pray and as we walk in our relationship with Him, let's know that we are giving our prayers and our concerns to the King of Kings and to the Lord of Lords. We put it there and let's not get in such a rut and routine in our walk in faith that that we take for granted his name don't use his name in a manner which is unproductive towards success and the success in which we are seeking is that right relationship with God where we are walking step for step with him where we are walking in the spirit and we are just in tune with him and it is constant communion with the Lord and continuous fellowship with God which is found only in a relationship through Jesus Christ and the sacrifice that he made thank you for giving me a little bit of your time Make your prayers sincere, make them true, and hold fast to them, to the King of Kings, okay? I love you. I appreciate you. Let's walk this walk together, and let's go out and give them heaven. God bless.